Mount Union and Christopher Newport looking to join that list and win their first ever title in program history. Here at the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum in Fort Wayne. Mount Union Purple Raiders. Mike Uline, the head coach. 12th year leading the team, over 220 wins. They're the champions of the Ohio Athletic Conference. Starting lineups on each side, Christian Parker, the All-American big for Mount Union, averaging close to 19 points per game. Christopher Newport, we highlighted Trey Barber and John Hines, the top two players on the side of the captains and their head coach, John Krikorian, approaching the 300 win mark. They are the champions of the Coast to Coast Conference, a conference that coach you're pretty familiar with. <laughs> coast to Coast, I love it. National championship game. Two teams, hard fought way to get here. And I'll tell you what, both have won 14 in a row, playing really well. Zipping right out of the gate. Christopher Newport attacking the rim with Colin Hines, who's the younger brother of John Hines, who we talked about at the top. Now Union gets a stop in their first possession. In the championship game for the first time in the school's history. Christian Parker takes the first three, misses left. And Colin Hines flies for the rebound. Both teams going to play aggressive half-court, man-to-man defense, physical, tough around the rim, and rebounding going to be a big key for both teams here early. 29 wins for Christopher Newport, second most in school history. Matt Brody misses a three, and now Union gets the rebound with Braden Poole. Real nice box out, one and done for both teams here early. Here's Parker against Barber. We Wanted to see this matchup all day long. Straight away three, pull off that guy, and Trey Barber registers the rebound. Oh, interesting, no double early against Christian Parker. 29 big points in the semifinal, 11 rebounds. Mr. for Newport, a three-point win, a back and forth game in the semifinal against Swarthmore on Thursday. And they had 10 ties, six lead changes. There's Ty Henderson. He's listed at only 5'9 at a Richmond, Virginia. Step back from the elbow. And an offensive rebound for the captives. Barber connects. And that's the game's first bucket. Barber, 6'8, 220, junior, 21 points in the semifinal. Three big blocks. And that's what Christopher Newport loves to do. Shoot it and go get it. That's Barber's second year at Christopher Newport. That's Christian Parker hitting the first three. <laughs> right on cue, huh? The two guys we featured in the open, big baskets here early for their teams. That's a theme for Mount Union in their semifinal win against Wisconsin Whitewater. Only one for 18 from three-point range. It's really an incredible stat. If you saw you could shoot one for 18 in the national semifinal and get to the championship. Hines off the mark, belongs to Mount Union. Well, Christopher Newport loves to shoot it and go get it. Quick rebounds. That's tough to defend, nice finish. And then you see here, catch, shoot. You mentioned one for 18 in the semifinal. Nice early start here for Mountain Union. We have Parker who averages close to 19 per game. Barber averages three blocks per game. So it's the score versus the defender. Barber wins the battle with a block shot. Featured his defense in the open as well. Two big bodies up front in the front court. Daring Hines to shoot at Colin Hines. Fires to his older brother, John Hines. At 18 points in the second half on Thursday. Can't connect there. Little undersized, that power forward, small forward, but can really get to the rim. Terrific athlete. Mentioned junior All-American, 22 points in the semifinal. Just went over 1,000 in his career. Colin Curley dips in and strokes two. The one thing that stands out for Mount Union to me, watching them today, how they kind of handle their business, and certainly looking at their starting lineup, this is a very mature group. A lot of fifth-year seniors, a lot of veteran players. Also big and long across the front line. Hines misses the three. I mentioned Colin Hines has been dared to shoot a couple of times in this game. Gurley rushes the three off the back rim. Colin Hines only 6 for 16 all season long shooting threes. And the captains need to get out like this and get a couple baskets in transition so they're not facing that tough half court defense on Mount Union. Hines climbs the ladder and Colin Hines the acrobat. 
the one who commits the foul. We see here great length, hands, and defense. But then Mount Union comes back with that kind of dynamic scoring ability, multiple guys that can score in different positions. And hey, both these teams have fought from behind almost through the whole tournament, so they know how to win when the game gets tight. Well, I was going to mention these first few minutes of a championship game, and how important is it to sort of weather the nerves that both of these teams are sure to have? Such a great question. Got to get the sweat going a little bit, get the nerves out of there. This is a huge stage, national TV, playing for a national championship and they're first for both. And Poole stumbles, and that's a travel on uh, Mount Union's forward, Brandon Poole. And back to that point, one thing you can do early if you're struggling a little bit offensively, try to get to the foul line. Try to get to the foul line, get a couple easy baskets, slow your team down, a little, little chance to regroup. Barber seals, double team comes, active hands from Mansfield. Now Union tries to save it over law to Christopher Newport though. But we return the energy inside the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. You can feel it. A championship is on the line. Every loose ball contested early. Battling for the Division Three Championship, Mount Union. On 5-2 early. All right, Coach, time to get to the keys to the game. Brought to you by Ace. Well, for the Raiders, get to the free throw line, as I mentioned before the break. Try to slow the game down a little bit and contain Hines. Such a dynamic score for CNU. And for the captains, control the glass. Limit the Raiders to one shot and value the ball. Can't turn the ball over on this big stage today. Needs for both of these teams with tons of community and support. Mount Union from Alliance, Ohio. A three and a half hour drive east of Fort Wayne. Christopher Newport, proud alumni base. Newport News, Virginia. Both teams looking for their first ever Division III men's basketball championship. Out of the timeout, Rodney Graves has checked in and misses a three. Parker attacking and scoring with the contest. Here you see, in transition, Tuff can handle the basketball. Christian Parker, 6'6", 215 junior from Canton, Ohio, Glen Oak High School. And I'll tell you what, physical, great presence. In these national championship games, it's usually one guy. It's a leader. Your best player has to play really well on this big stage. I think last year to Randolph Macon, Buzz Anthony put on the show here. And certainly early, Christian Parker's been terrific. You brought up Christian Parker's high school, Glen Oak High School. Can you believe it was six years ago where he didn't make his high school freshman team? Incredible. Was cut from the freshman team. Got more run as a junior. Really broke out there. But the shot clock winding down. Graves off front rim. Battle for the rebound. Tip towards the baseline. Scooped up by Mansfield. Gurley muscles inside, lay a high off glass, follow up tip goes, Christian Parker showcasing his abilities early. There he is, go get that extra possession. Christopher Newport got to find a way to get a basket and get them off the glass. That grave shot might have been tipped by Poole. Remember it was Mount Union who fell behind by 20 points against Wisconsin Whitewater in the semifinal. Parker again. This time it's off. Yeah, that time kind of one and done. And if you're the captains here, try to get something quick in transition, get to that foul line. Ty Henderson handling for the captains. He arrived early in shoot around, getting a bunch of shots up for the captains. John Hines cut off. Graves makes the dribble handoff. Crosses over, bullies pull, clock down to two. Brody from the corner, doesn't draw iron. Shot clock violation. Um, Mount Union fans love it. Christian Parker, he's up his game in the NCAA tournament. Came in averaging about 18 per game. You can see he's been over his average every single game in the how about, tournaments. How about those numbers? I mean, incredible numbers, as I mentioned. On this big stage, usually need a great performance. Already seven big points, five rebounds. 
And I'll tell you the thing that's also been impressive about Mount Union. Number one, they're 30 and two. They've, they've only lost two games by a total of 14 points, but their physical presence here early has been dominant. Now, how important are these minutes coming up for Christopher Newport with Parker on the bench, already trailing by seven? And go and go to your bench here. See if you can't find a steal, get something going in transition. And you don't want this game to get too far away from you. Only two points here early. Get the jitters out. Get something going to the basket if you're the captains. Ty Henderson commits his first foul. So for John Krikorian, for Christopher Newport, team in a deficit early. Yeah, this is a team that's trailed eight times this season at halftime. They've won all eight of those games. Incredible. You mentioned John Krikorian. What a career. 80% winning percentage, 260 and 62 in his 12 years at Christopher Newport. Terrific coach and program. Gurley, vicious drive off the back rim. Every loose ball in this game is a battle. It stays on this end. Little things, bounces, rebounds, extra possessions. All the little things matter here. You see Christopher Newport able to get their hands on him, but just can't quite secure the rebound. And John Hines has really got to get going here on both ends for the captains. Had a slow start on Thursday as well, then erupted for 18 in the second half. And here's a Mount Union turnover. Logan Hill, the one who was the last to touch, the reserve big. Yeah, the big minutes with Parker on the bench. Trey Barber back in. Caleb Furr, again, just those couple of minutes to give your best players a break. Every minute so important in a game like this. Especially in a game like this. Got to get on the bench, catch your breath, take a quick drink, and then try to get back in there. You know, both these teams really know how to win. Mention coming in, 14-game win streaks and playing super well right now. John Hines, an All-American, gets fouled in. That's exactly how he did it. In the semifinal, just getting into the paint, drawing contact, and then living right here at the free throw line. Foul called on Logan Hill is his first. John Hines knocks down the first. CBS Sports celebrates Women's History Month, recognizing the outstanding contributions women and girls have made on and off the field of play. Hines makes both free throws. Christopher Newport is looking for their third title in 16 months in their athletic department. The other championships, women's soccer and softball. So recognizing the achievements of some of their women's programs at Christopher Newport. Another shot of John Kokori in there. His wife and daughters and son made the 13-hour drive last night to get here. And so many fans made their way here to Fort Wayne. And back to the game. That free throws, those two free throws there by John Hines, that was big. That kind of settled them down a little bit, got their best player going, and stopped the clock. Hines was banged up a bit earlier, was being looked at on the bench. Colin Hines back in. John Hines misses a three. Wrestling match again for the rebound. Held ball, arrow means we walk the floor. It belongs to Mount Union. There's some big bodies in there. Logan Hill, 6'7", 205. Ian Anderson, 6'7", 225. Some veteran guys. Every possession matters. Physical, physical, hard-fought game here this afternoon. We've seen it pretty much from the opening jump ball. Every time that ball comes off the rim, both teams scrapping for it. Well, you and I were here at shoot-around today, and we were both just kind of in awe at the real physical size of both teams. Jeffrey Mansfield, a well-built guard, and a Wilmington, Ohio, hits the three. Yeah, 6'3", 190-pound senior, another veteran guy, played a lot of minutes. John Hines finds Colin Hines, who winds it up. Can't connect. And Mount Union making the conscious decision to leave open Colin Hines. And so far it's worked as Christopher Newport with just four points. Mount Union sharing the basketball, setting their feet. Big three. And the Purple Raiders with the lead here at Fort Wayne. Make sure to tune in to the 2023 Reese's College All-Star Game presented by Walmart on March 31st, live at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on CBS Sports Network. Mount Union's headliner, Christian Parker, has gotten off to a great start. 
Well, a guy that averages over 18 a game on the season and just under 10 rebounds a game has gotten off to a great start. I mentioned in the open, he's great around the rim. And what does that mean? He can score in multiple ways. Steps out, shoots a three. Offensive rebounds another way. Tip in, just great hands, keeps the ball high. Certainly been the dominant force here early this afternoon for Mount Union. Well, after a couple of minutes on the bench, he is back in. Seven points, five boards. And his last seven games, going back to the Ohio Athletic Conference Tournament, he's been averaging 25 a game. Burley, a physical guard, gets it off the rim. It might have been touched as well, but it didn't matter. Thought we might get a goal 10 there. Burley shows his aggressiveness towards the rim, and John Hines here got to find a way to get to the basket. Mountain Union switching everything and putting multiple bodies on him. Wide to the right on the fadeaway. Contested rebound. Colin Hines gets it. There's Trey Barber. Working against Parker. Two great two-way bigs. I like that. I think they have to keep going inside, try to get him some more touches, and more importantly, see if they can't get Christian Parker in a little bit of foul trouble. Well, that field goal ended, Coach, an 0 for 12 field goal drought for the captains. Well, this is a team that's in the national championship game. They shot 28% from the three and 62% from the foul line in the semifinals. And there he is. Look at Parker. Wow! Flex on him, Christian Parker! Got to find a way to get him off the offensive glass. Playing with so much confidence and focus. Rebounding such an important key. Position and ability to finish around the rim. Wow. Uh, that close to getting a trophy. You can tell he could taste it. Isn't it a great story? A guy got better and better. Didn't play early on in his high school career, as you mentioned. And went to the right level. So many great players at this Division III level. And guys who get a chance to play and learn and develop. Says getting cut from his freshman team. It's always in the back of his mind. That motivation factor. I tell you, the way he plays angry. Well, how about this team? I mean, they were down 20 at the half in the semifinal. And here they are just looking dominant early on. Barber off front rim, and it ricochets off the hands of Ian Anderson. See if John Kikorian here maybe tries to go to his bench a little bit, find a couple different, maybe find a little different unit that can do something offensively, shake it up defensively. They may even have to look at Dublin in the post. Great hustle here, everybody hustling here. There's John. What a job he's done there. One and one and one. Terrific staff and winning program for the captains. A Boston area guy out of Auburn, Massachusetts. Yep. Christian Parker, he's feeling size mismatch. Too strong. Offensive rebound, though, for the Purple Raiders. Hook shot, cool, no. And this might be what they need. Push in transition. See if he can't get something quick. A good three in transition. I love it. Throw it ahead. You're not facing the set defense. Another great move by John Kukori in there. Going to his bench and coming off with Caleb Fur to try to get another look offensively. Caleb Furr, his first field goal. His dad, Greg, was a basketball player at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. But Colin Gurley continuing to attack the baskets. Yeah, containing penetration and keeping them off the glass is going to be the focus of the halftime speech for John Kikorian. Jake Latta in for the captains. Latta attacks for the first time. Misses off glass. Transition for the Purple Raiders. Scoop to the hoop, Christian Parker already in double figures. Time out, Christopher Newport. Mount Union's defense stifling, and they're getting some looks on the offensive end. Well, this is, a game, this is a team that hasn't lost a game since the middle of February, and they're showing it all here. Ability to get to the rim, and they love the running transition. And how about Christian Parker? Has he been just special early here in this game? Christian Parker, these are just his first half numbers. They're in the semifinal event today at the championship. Four of 12. In the first half yesterday seems below his standard on Thursday, I should say. And then uh, today, here in the championship, he's been the go-to guy in the early go. Now Coach Rulon got to be thrilled with this start, both offensively and defensively. Out of the timeout, Matt Brody too long on the three. Bump. A foul on Darrell Newsom. 
Jake Latta, big offensive rebound there. Christopher Newport, I was talking to John Curry before the game, he actually came out and he said, you know, most people, most teams practice shooting in free throws. We actually practice going and getting the rebound. So that's what they got to do and that's what they're going to have to do at all positions. Just find extra possessions. Christopher Newport only had four turnovers in their win on Thursday. Allen Hines again can't get it to go. He's 0 for 4 from the floor. Parker double team. He doesn't care. Halfway down, pops out. Loose ball foul. It's on Mel Union. Double team came a little bit late, but they certainly threw something different at Parker that time. There you see Coach Line. What a job. Former high school coach. 12th year and 30 and 2. Colin That's Union pretty good this season. Colin That's not bad. It's funny. Colin Gurley, now Union guard, said about his coach, Mike Uline. He's like the funny uncle at the barbecue. <laughs> Just, uh, really relatable. More than a coach. Really cares about each of these guys individually. And all these guys. Yeah, I'll tell you what. There's some pressure. Coaches were pacing around the hallways here before the game. and Fans come from all over here to see this game. And all of a sudden, Christopher Newport, a little momentum that doubled down in the post there. And a little aggressive offensively here. See Coach. First foul on Jeffrey Mansfield. And Christian Parker right now outscoring the entire Christopher Newport team. That's just three for 22 shooting so far. That can draw some fouls and get to the line. Foul before the ball even inbounded. It's on Colin Gurley. That is his second for the senior out of Akron. Running a couple of fouls. And neither team plays a lot of guys, and the other team really, really deep. So going to really be their core guys. They're going to have to find a way here if you're Christopher Newport to get back in this game. Rodney Graves hit a big three down the stretch. To help get separation and it's one more. Uh, not that of bounds, but just four to shoot for the captain. Something here going to the basket. Quick screen, pop out three or get something down near around the rim. Officiating crew, Darren Drake, Justin St. Pierre, Ben Wolf, giving a bit of a warning before the ball inbounded with four on the clock. Henderson off the screen, has to fire, was tipped. Shot clock violation. So we talked about Christian Parker on offense, Shot that time hedging violation. on defense to make the play. Great length, size. Nice job here. You don't want to foul in this situation. Short shot clock play straight up and down. And the physical presence of Mount Union, almost at every position, has really been the storyline here early. Just physical dominant. Very senior-laden team, graduate students, seniors, juniors across their whole line. You know, for Christopher Newport, a very young team, really. They return almost their entire team, their starting unit coming back next year. Yeah, only Matt Brody in their rotation is the only player without eligibility for next year. Face up pull. No. And that's what Colin Hines does. One of their best defenders, a scrappy rebounder. Going to get it going on offense. They'll give some relief. Attacks the rim off the back iron. And once again, on a second chance shot, a block shot by Braden Poole. Yeah, that's some position where Lada gets a great rebound, maybe an extra shot fake, try to get to the foul line. Ian Anderson tries to drop step up and over the top, leaves it off the front rim. Field goal struggles continue. For the captain, just three for 26. Darrell Newsom for an iron. And both teams a little tight offensively. John Hines needs to try to get an open look here in transition. Mount Union putting multiple guys on him. There he goes right to the rim. That's the best time to attack because the defense isn't set. They don't have a chance to switch or do anything. And if you're an All-American like John Hines, 22 big points in the semifinal, that's when you have to attack. Coach Rikorian calls him a fierce competitor. The personality showcases itself when the captains fall behind. They've done it a bit. They come back every time. Jab step Mansfield uses the ball fake. Great space for Parker. Connects! 
14 for Parker. Well, just as Christopher Newport got the momentum, the All-American Parker just shows up with another big shot. Anderson, it's low, off his ankles, sneaks it out. He's a slasher, John Hines spins into the lane. He's bumped and fouled. Burrell Newsom hammered him to the ground. But Christian Parker is still outscoring Christopher Newport. Well, every time they need a big basket, the 6'6 junior has been there. Christian Parker from Mount Union. Purple Raiders, a roaring start, leading by 12, getting late in the first half. This is a football powerhouse, Mount Union. 13 D3 national titles, their most recent in 2017. Football alumni list, a long one, a lot of coaches. Nick Sirianni, Matt Campbell, Tom Capers. Now you talk about their success in all sports. Football, their 13 titles. That's the most in Division Three history. Add in track and field, indoor track, cross country. But this is their first ever appearance, the men's basketball championship game. Well, chasing a championship, and they're on the big stage today. This team has not lost a neutral site game all season, so they certainly know how to win. Speaking of winners, John Hines, another All-American. Like the way that he's attacked here, got himself to the foul line. Mountain Union's just done a nice job, though, of putting multiple defenders on him throughout the game. He gets to the line a lot. He averages 17 per game. The junior out of Norfolk, Virginia. He shoots just 61% at the free throw line. As a team, not a very good free throw shooting team. Mentioned 62% in the semifinal. And here they are in the national championship game, and his younger brother. Well, I've got on my all-hair team for the entire season, by <laughs> no the way. Doubt. Um, tremendous and uh, young, talented player. He was out there early. Must have rolled his ankle. Saw him with his sneakers off. So a quick tape job and back in for Christopher Newport. But they got to find a way to chip into this lead. Try to get it under 10 going into halftime. John was telling us about some of the epic one-on-one -on -one battles against his younger brother, Colin. It's kind of developed their style of play. John, the offensive player. Colin, more of the defensive player, having to defend John in the backyard. Barker against the double team. Hits the front rim. Here's John Hines in transition. Between the legs dribble. Denied at the rim. Cut off in a whistle. Offensive fouls the call. Chris Banner takes the charge. Physical, tough play, trying to get to the rim here in transition. A little shoulder. Hates little things like that in the National Championship. Taking the charge, a loose ball, dive in, finishing a play. Everything on the line here this afternoon in Fort Wayne. Very often, these important championship-level games become possession games. Another slight push off. That one not called, and Newsom makes the defense pay. He might have gotten away with a push off, as you said there. And the Mount Union fans came in droves here. About three and a half hour drive over here to Fort Wayne today. Shovel pass underneath off the hands of Mount Union. Let's take another look at that last three. Uh, the captain's bench didn't like this. Set your feet, square your body. Lose some nice look there. Graduate student, 6'3", 180. Physical, experienced guy. So the three-point breakdown, remember, in the semifinal on Thursday, just one for 18, Mount Union from three. Already four made threes in this one. You knew they were due. This wasn't a poor three-point shooting team all year by any means. Well, I, th I think it's worth noting, don't forget, he seems not used to playing in a big arena like this. So getting that first game under your belt makes a big difference. You, you know, you've had a chance to play here. You've had a chance to shoot on these rims. You've had practice, shoot around. So today, a much better shooting performance, certainly for Mount Union here early. That's in the four threes for Mount Union. That was just the fifth field goal of the game for Christopher Newport. Pull for three, off rim, another offensive rebound for the Purple Raiders, Newsom second chance, and Barber finally wrestles it away. I'd like to see him get Barber another touch or two around the rim, see if he can't slow the game down and get something going. Well, whistle is the seventh team foul on Mount Union, so the one and one. 
Upcoming for John Hines. Yeah, team, as you mentioned, does not shoot the ball very well from the free throw line. 62% in the semifinal, but keep getting back there, slow this game down a little bit. That helps Christopher Newport get back in this game. Braden Poole, his second foul. Hines back in. Graves heads to the bench for the captains at a Newport News, Virginia. Christian Parker struts back on, already 14 points for the D3 All-American. Yeah, 29 big points in the semifinal. Front end. And both coaches cycling through, and Ian Anderson reinserted out of Sterling, Virginia. That's some size coming in for the 5'9", Ty Henderson. Yeah, big, strong, off the bench, 6'7", 225. Ian Anderson, another physical presence. Christopher Newport got some veteran guys off the bench. Barber plays volleyball nice. off the basket. Yep. I think they got to keep getting him touches. We featured him in the open. He was terrific in the semifinal. He needs to get more looks. Parker, a quick three, and here come the captains. Within nine, Hines transition floater won't fall. Over the back called on Colin Hines. That's the second on the freshman. Find yourself an extra possession. Trey Barber, a little push there, but gets away from it. Keeps the ball high, don't bring it down. Terrific touch around the rim. There's that extra basket they like. This game has gotten a little choppy here the last couple minutes. That's actually the way the captains want to play. They want to hold, grab, and that last offensive possession, John Hines had a chance to get the rim, couldn't do it. Of course, it really does feel like Christopher Newport, as you can see, uh, Colin Hines exit with the two fouls. But for shooting, what is it, six for 30, that's 20%. To be within nine points is not the worst spot. Well, I'm really impressed with your quick math there, too. That's terrific. Yeah, that, that really did that without a screen in front of me that had the uh, shooting percentages. Nowhere close. Logan Hill misses the hook shot. Behind the back goes Ty Henderson. Zigzags. Barber stumbles. He gets fouled. Logan Hill. That is his second. So a couple of free throws for Christopher Newport trying to get Ben back in this game from the charity strike. Division three championship game. Mount Union leads by nine. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Brent Stover, Chris Walker, Pete Gillen, John Rostin. They'll get you caught up with what's going on during the NCAA tournament. Plus, we'll have first half stats and highlights. That's coming up on AT&T at the half. Now, how about yesterday? story, Tobin Anderson, the head coach of Fairley Dickinson, and what they were able to do, knocking out the one seed, just a second ever 16 over one with Purdue falling. Now, of course, he has Division three ties. He played at D3 Wesleyan, coach at Clark and then Hamilton at the Division Three level. So Division Three to making an impact on the national stage at the NCAA tournament. Fun to see. Yeah, certainly great roots. Terrific job at Clarkson and at Hamilton. And he's a great player at Wesleyan and now taking all that skill and time and development in the Division Three level on the national stage. Certainly <laughs> he deserves it. What a performance yesterday. And Certainly cares a lot about his deep roots here in Division Three basketball. This ball foul. Off the miss free throw. Send Logan Hill to the line for the one and one. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that drives coaches crazy. Trying to get back in the game. You got a one and one out of a timeout. Chance to cut it to six. And then you miss and then come back and foul. But they get lucky because Mountain Union also struggles from the foul. And the Hill's just a 50% free throw shooter, so really not a bad foul. Barber, bang, spins, flips, and will head to the line. So that's what the captains have emphasized here late in the half, getting to the free throw line to get back in the game. Yeah, I mentioned, I think you got to keep going inside, but the defense has been really good for Mount Union. The Purple Raiders have just sworn, changed, switched aggressively, challenged every shot, been tough around the rim, and just no easy looks throughout the entire afternoon so far. But, all that being said, Christopher Newport kind of got this game the way they like to play. Talking to Coach McCoy before the game, like, hey, we want it to be ugly and choppy, and we just scrap and find a way. They've fought their way through this whole tournament, really this whole season. 
29 and 3. Just saw Jonah McCartney check in for the Purple Raiders for the first time. Another split at the line for Christopher Newport. Parker already 14 points. Region 7 Player of the Year spins it off the back of the rim. Tries to get it back on the other side. Anderson denies it. Uh, look for the captains trying to tack here in transition. It is a 7-0 run for the captains. Nearly 9-0. Anderson has it spin out. Captains keep possession. Anderson wants the clear out. He has McCartney. Instead, it's Barber down low. Clack at just three. Has a height advantage. Two seconds. He's to get it up. Doesn't see it. Shot clock violation. And that's the smothering Mountain Union defense. Yeah, we talked about that defense a couple minutes ago. And they got caught in a switch. They had their point guard trying to guard the big fella down low. And he just didn't get it up quick enough. And that's a little bit of a mistake by his teammates. you got to talk there and communicate and say, get that shot up. Let him know where the shot clock is. How about the energy from Mansfield, though? You mentioned the opposing guard against the big, holding up in the post and then letting him know. <laughs> you can see this. Every possession matters. So much at stake here on this huge stage here in Fort Wayne. Elbow pull up, Jay. Chris Painter counting. From Saint, yeah, you beat me to it. You beat me to it, partner. Saint Vincent St. Mary High School. They had a pretty good player play there out of Akron, Ohio. Still playing King James. Drew Joyce, still the coach oh, at yeah. St. Vincent St. Mary's. Anderson, a wild pull up. And a rebound dug out by Painter from St. Vincent St. Mary. There, I can get it in too. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Jonah McCartney off to the right. So seven for 24 from three this year. Brody's the shooter for the captains. And knocks it down. Matt Brody, a 38% sniper. And it's just a seven-point game with a minute 30. Veteran guy, fifth year. That's probably their best offensive possession in transition throughout the game. Mention Mount Union in their football background, a football score. Actually, they had the extra point, 28-22. Get another stop. Team out of Virginia. A chance to get even closer. Brody again. Front iron. Loose ball battle once more, and it belongs to Mount Union. Last touch underneath with Jake Latta battling. Well, I mentioned Christian Newport trying to get ahead and get something easy in transition. You see the ball, and then get to an open space, kick, run to that line. You see, run to that line, get your feet set. You see all that empty space, big open space right there, feet set on the line, terrific job in transition. That was their best offensive possession in the first half. And it starts with getting in the open floor. Now, it wasn't ruled out of bounds on the baseline. It was actually ruled Jake Latta pushed Christian Parker on the baseline. So walking the length of the floor again, one and one for Parker who misses. Both teams really struggling from the foul line, and that's going to be a key thing to watch as this game develops in the second half. Hines draws another foul. We be through nine fouls on Thursday in the semifinal. Again, that really slowed down the game and allowed Christopher Newport to take control. He's doing the same thing here tonight. Well, again, this is a team that knows how to win. Their last loss back in January 11th, and, and they lost to Randolph-Macon, last year's national champion. So this team, even though they get down, they know how to win. They've got the style of this game now to their favor. Anyone, Dante Collier checks in for the Purple Raiders. Dante Collier, 6'4", freshman out of Columbus, enters for Mount Union. And just one for six shooting, but you can tell his impact. Makes both. Somehow just a four-point game. Mount Union led by as many as 14. Give it to Parker against the double team. On the dribble, spins underneath, and there is a foul. 
We'll see if the free throw woes could end for Mount Union with Christian Parker. See, I think if you're Christopher Newport there, you bring the double team. Here comes the double. Watch Hines come. Well, he had already left there, and he didn't stay. You know, get the ball out of Parker's hands if you're Christopher Newport. Make somebody else beat you. So far, 0 for 4 from the line. Make it 0 for 5. Or maybe just keep fouling him. Maybe that's, maybe that's the, be the best defense. Really, that is how the captains have gotten back in it. They've made some free throws on their end. And these front ends of the one and ones from Mount Union have been empty. Now with Parker shooting two, we'll see if he can finally end the drought. There it is. Now speaking of empty, those big empty baselines, big arenas, difficult perception, but free throw shooting going to be a big part of the second half. Christopher Newport with the last look. Henderson finds Hines in his office, takes the extended, Jay Adams down at the horn! John Hines, he's in double figures, and Christopher Newport somehow within three at the half. This team 8-0 on the season when trailing at the half, 8-0, and here's the All-American with a big basket, in and out, pump the fist, let's get to halftime. Yeah. If you look at the stats, you almost just want to want to throw them out like, hey, it's a three-point game. Throw everything out from the first half. We've got to go out and put together a good half. I mentioned it going into the half. Christopher Newport is 8-0 on the season, trailing at the half. John Hines for Christopher Newport. The school out of Newport News, Virginia. Trey Barber on the follow-up in just a one-point game. Shoot it and go get it. That's what Coach Kikorian loves to do and teaches his guys and all of a sudden now the captains down one both teams carry 14 game winning streaks into the championship game off balance leader curly off glass <laughs> probably not the way he drew it up but it's gonna take a little bounce or an offensive rebound or a toughness play here to find a way to win this national championship for both schools, it's their first ever appearance in the national championship game. I thought this was a quick shot. See the high ball screen here. Defense plays back. A little off balance banker. <laughs> Good for a game of horse. Probably not what you wanted in the uh, first possession of a national championship game. Unless it goes in. In the first half, not many shots went in. Clean looks. A difficult one goes in off glass. Barber tries to shuffle. Great chase by John Hines to save it. Clock at just one. One-handed push shot off the back rim. You see, anytime Hines dribbles or gets in the lane, Mountain Union is really just almost having a team defensive effort to try to keep him away from the basket. Poor splashes it on. Yeah, a little defensive breakdown there, allowing him to come back to his strong right hand. Scoop to the rim on the other side. The pace picking up. Matt Brody, his second field goal. That's the second basket. 1-3 in the first half, and then a layup there for Brody. That's been their two best offensive possessions. I thought these teams were struggling for the floor. <laughs> they went in and had a little uh, caffeine there at halftime. I'll tell you what, the pace has picked up tremendously. All right, thought about it. Attacking pool, well off the backboard. Rebound vacuumed in by Newsom. Physical though, every possession. Pull up from Curley, halfway down. This is where I think Christopher Newport needs to attack. How about Mount Union getting back though defensively? Prevent the transition look. Terrific transition defense, really other than two possessions. Mount Union's transition D has been great all afternoon. Brody from downtown, too strong. Great chase, Colin Gurley to scoop it up. Lobs, too tall, and out of bounds. Christian Parker, the target, slow to get up. Quick crossover, finish, really got a knack for scoring, doesn't he? Gurley's great body, 210 senior. See the young freshman going out. Colin Gurley, D3, all region, second team. He was all Ohio Athletic Conference first team this year. Barber navigates, 
finishes with contact. Out the basket, he'll head to the line. Really like the way, number one, he catches the ball. Go meet the basketball. You got to catch it first before you can score. But then he took his time, gathered himself. There's the shot fake right there. Get him up in the air. Don't try to get it up so quick against this big physical Mountain Union team. Nice job. He's really been the difference. When he's good offensively, all of a sudden, Christopher Newport's better offensively. He's a transfer within the conference, spent a year at Mary Washington, the Coast to Coast Conference. And yeah, who was also in the NCAA tournament this year. They beat my St. Lawrence Saints in the first round. Carter, oh, three! Wow! Oh, well, Newsom! Boy, has the pace picked up in this game or what? Newsom from Twinsburg, Ohio. Pace is picked up, the energy is never left. John Hines, high rise J, won't fall. Christian Parker smacks the rebound. You kind of hear the Mountain Union fans behind us. They were packed in our hotel here this afternoon. Jeffrey Nansville light it up. And a timeout for Christopher Newport. Media timeout. Throw it ahead in transition. Mount Union gets the lead back. Coach, we were saying during the break, it almost felt like two different teams came out of halftime with the style of play just completely different from what we saw the first 20 minutes. Yeah, we both looked at each other. It's like two different teams out here. <laughs> the pace has picked up, and sometimes on a big stage in a big game like this, that first half is physical and choppy because both teams a little nervous and, you know, got a lot on the line here, but Mount Union's found a way here offensively in the second half to really stretch this thing out. Parker for three. Now both of these teams trailed at halftime in the semifinals. And both coaches talked about the importance of halftime and just say, leave no regrets. Go out there and, and just play. Like, earn the opportunity to play in the championship by just having fun. Well, we're having fun watching these two battle it out for the D3 championship. This will be the 19th different team to capture that trophy. There's the 18 champions in Division Three. Neither of these teams have ever won it. Turnover out of the gate. The double team on the block forces a steal. We saw their Mount Union out of the timeout wanted to go inside. Barber inside. And our two featured players there, Hines and Barber, will drive and finish. Gurley examining the freshman, Colin Hines. Takes him all the way to the rack and scoops it in. Put that on the highlight tape, Colin Gurley. <laughs> and he came up with a smile. How about the big basket? Started the second half and another one to answer. Here comes a quick double against Barber. Impressive drive and even better. Spin off the glass. Parker takes it away. And don't forget this Mount Union team was down big at the half in the semifinal. So there's no panic in this group. They know how to win when the game gets tight. 55 second half points in the second half. So maybe they're just a second half team. Leave it for Colin Hines, the freshman. It's a blocking foul. Jeffrey Mansfield commits his third. Got to help early here, get the ball out of his hands, but a little acrobatic finish. Jump, strong body, get under the shot blocker. So many terrific players and student athletes here on display on this big stage. Talked about their road and path to get here. And for Christopher Newport, baseline out of bounds, another great opportunity to get an offensive look. Blinding crossover, John Hines muscles inside, tries to chisel for two, instead he'll head to the line. Braden Poole with the stunned look as he is guilty of his third. Six for eight already from the line, John Hines. 
hasn't shot the ball well from the field, two for 11, but let's give Mount Union and their coaching staff and their scouting report a lot of credit. Other than that basket at the end of the first half, he really hasn't had a clean look at the basket. His younger brother, Colin, also a starter. Splits the free throws, not that of bounds, will go to Mount Union. Logan Hill reinserted. He has three fouls. The former Rocket at Toledo. Braden Poole, the one to check out. He has three fouls as well. Getting to a big game on a big stage like this, a couple things become really important. Making free throws and taking care of the basketball. Taking care of the basketball, both teams have done fairly well, but making free throws is going to be really interesting this last 14 minutes. Gurley slices, gets rid of it. Risky pass, Parker there. Off the glass himself, playing wall ball. Well, Christian Parker was early, dominant. Oh, big time pass. And a big time finish, Colin Hines lets out a scream. Just a freshman, and that's older brother. Well, I was talking about Christian Parker and how he dominated the early part of the first half, but I'll tell you what, quick down the court, the captains with a, another opportunity here at the foul line, brother to brother. Can't complete the three-point play. That last foul on Logan Hill, his fourth. It's another missed free throw opportunity for Christopher Newport. They missed seven. Hill tried to seal off, but couldn't chase the ball. We get down this last 14 minutes. I, I think the two stars, and there you see Coach Feline, what a job he's done. Great season, 30 and 2, 16 and 2 in the conference. They've won 14 in a row. And great second half team, but both superstars, both All Americans here, have to kind of dominate the ball, have to be selfish almost, and that's Hines and Parker. Take over time. Colin Hines, met inside, save possession, Brody pays it off for the three. Second long ball of the game for Matt Brody. And he's really their only outside threat, a big three in the first half and another big one there. So maybe some more looks for him out of some set plays. Christopher Newport remaining in striking distance. And that's an offensive foul on Logan Hill, and that is his fifth. So he is fouled out. Well, Matthew Brody has really been the offensive spark. Hustle play here. Little extra possession, nice extra rebound. Great extra pass as well, right in the shooting pocket. And the bench loves it. The bench loves it. Some guys, you know, not playing, but I'll tell you what. They so badly want to have a national championship and a, on their resume and a ring in their uh, jewelry box, if you will. And Logan Hill, by the way, mentioned his fifth foul. He's fouled out. And his scoring isn't high, just a one and a half points per game. But he is that guy to give Parker a break as a reserve big. And right on cue, Parker commits a foul on Barber, who will head to the free throw line. I think if Barber would go back to that shot fake like he did, early here in the second half. He will be at the foul line or in the basket every possession. Barber's a 69% free throw shooter. <laughs> Dare I say it, a made free throw here. Cuts it to one possession. And you did not jinx it. <laughs> Amazing. Just hanging around, finding a way to stay close. That's the style for the captains. Captains have scored seven in a row. We'll be back in 30 seconds from Fort Wayne. Here in Fort Wayne, building that has hosted the NBA back in the day, the yes. 50s of Fort Wayne Pistons. Almost 66 years to the day of the last Fort Wayne NBA game. And the captains and the Purple Raiders battling for the D3 championship. Colin Curley creates the contact, foul on the floor, and a sarcastic cheer 
from the folks from Alliance, Ohio, who made the trip. A lot of people from Alliance, Ohio. Three and a half hour trip across over here to Fort Wayne, Indiana, and that is a much wanted first foul against Christopher Newport. It's the third on Colin Hines, who scampers out. But boy, the physicalness has picked up, hasn't it, on both sides, around the rim, on the basketball, both teams, half court, man to man, hard nosed, tough basketball. Elbow pull and rattles in. Chris Painter, that's the second similar shot that he's hit in this game from the elbow, and that one gives Mount Union a five point lead. Yeah, veteran guy, six foot senior. Ian Anderson, size advantage, nearly off the side of the backboard. He goes over the back. Colin Gurley shakes his head, saying, Hey, you're not getting over me. Singer out of Akron. But his teammate at from Akron, Chris Painter, pull up a perfect picture. For Newport, clawing back within five. Discovering new ground. By the way, Christopher Newport, an old explorer, so discovering new ground. Hey, they are in the national championship game for the first time, looking for their first title. They've been in the tournament quite a bit. Yeah, great transition there. I like that, the captains. And I'll tell you what, they're playing well now. Sharing the basketball, getting to the rim, like their offensive attack. Sharing it, passing well. Love that pass and transition. I think they got to get Brody a few more looks on offense. John Hines, the All-American. Barber, 27 points combined, rest of the team only 15. So they're the guys gonna have to carry him back here, try to get this lead because Mountain Union just has not given in every time that Newport's made a run. Jonah McCartney is back in for Mount Union. This is Darrell Newsom on the dribble drive. He pushed off. Matt Brody takes the charge. It's an offensive foul. Brody's been terrific. Little things, two big shots. A nice two in transition in there. Taking the great charge. Coach doesn't like it. What a job. Great demeanor over there. Great staff. Fun to be around their team this afternoon. And Mount Union, terrific athletic department and program. Mentioned their football team. And try to win their first national championship in basketball. Trying to deny that is John Hines, the fierce competitor out of Norfolk, Virginia, and it's down to just a three-point deficit. Allowing him to come back to his strong right hand, he's so athletic. Early on in the first half, Mountain Union didn't give him any clean looks. And this is a blocking foul. Hines thought he had a charge taken, but instead it's a defensive foul, his second. This is what makes him an All-American. Little shot big drive with your left hand, but square up, square those big strong shoulders. Use that right hand so your Mountain Union got to make him keep going to his left. Gurley again tells the team to clear out. Wants the drive and gets it off the glass. Boy, doesn't he have a knack for big baskets? I thought they were going to go inside to Parker for sure. Brody hammer, no call. All ball, says the officials. Zigzagging Gurley. Floats it to nowhere. Pat Brody on the receiving end. Tyler him against the big and Parker. And he doesn't care. Brody. How about that? That was just a veteran, veteran play for the fifth year senior. Thought he got fouled the play before and said, I'm taking this one to the rack. And all of a sudden, again, a one possession game. Seems like Gurley comes through every time it's a one possession game for Mount Union. Christian Parker, the All-American, poked by Barber, clocked down to three. After rush, doesn't get it off in time. Shot clock violation, although Painter did get it up, but not in time. I think it was Ty Henderson who came on the underneath double before to make the ball get kicked out. Great job by our crew there. That was catching Par that. Parker who got it up. They will take a look at it. Also got a signal saying looking at a, a three or a two. 
I think that's definitely still in his hand. Yeah, that one clearly didn't get off in time. The signal we just got from one of the officials was the three or a two. There you see the ball in his hand and the zero on the shot clock. Gotcha. They corrected and said they're looking at this play that we're showing here, the shot clock. Yep. There you see here, ball clearly, I think if we slow it down, ball clearly in his hand, still right there. And there's the shot clock at zero. No question about that one. That is going to be a shot clock violation. Opportunity for Christopher Newport get a little timeout here. I'll tell you what, I think Coach Gregorian might want to try to get Matthew Brody another shot. You know, put the ball in John Hines' hand, let him create, but see if you can't get Brody, who's had a couple big baskets here in the second half, and he's had veteran presence for them as well. Now, Coach Gregorian called him the 3 and D team player. He shoots threes, he defends usually the top perimeter assignment. Christopher Newport, the ball down three. Whip to the corner, fur for the tie! Yes, sir! Wow, off the bench, and how about the delivery from Ty Henderson? Drive, dish, catch and shoot, hands ready, terrific offense. Offensive foul caught on Gurley. And this scrappy team, Christopher Newport. Watch the drive here. Hands and feet, catch, shoot, finish. Love the drive, hands ready to shoot, feet ready to shoot, finish straight up and down. His buddies love it on the bench, and all of a sudden, here we are tied in the national championship game. Even at 49, with 9.20 left, both teams looking for their first ever Division Three men's basketball title. Brody for the lead off the front rim. Christopher Newport led the game 2-0. They haven't led since. Henderson commits the reach and foul. Yeah, probably not a great shot there for Brody, but he was feeling it a little bit, and they had the momentum there. You see Coach K, as so many call him. The job he's done. Assistant Jaron Dyson got to visit with him a little bit before the game as well. Terrific staffs on both teams. Mentioned that Christopher Newport's half. How about Roland Ross has been connected to the program? Christopher Newport for over 40 years. 40 years, player and coach. Amazing. Played for the first Christopher Newport coach, and then was an assistant for the next three. 39th as an assistant. I thought you were going to say he played for Christopher Newport. That's really, go <laughs> really going back. Yeah, that would be old school. That would be old school indeed. There he is, Roland Ross. 39th season as an assistant. He mentioned his playing days as well. So over 40 years connected to this program at a Newport News, Virginia. And speaking of connected, both of these teams are connected right now. Heading down to eight minutes. Gamble by Parker, loses it. Brother! He tried to end the game with a dunk, but it's a foul. I mean, that would have brought the house down. Instead, he'll head to the line with 8.38 left. Replay here. You see him try to get up. You see where the contact is. There's a reach in there. Christopher Newport remains tied. Barber's first free throw off. Yeah, that's one of those dunks. You get the opposing big to gamble, and then you slam it on the rotation. Well, speaking of, of dunks, Chris, Christian Parker did gamble. He wanted to dunk and missed it. And Trey Barber from Woodbridge, Virginia. Big free throw there. And they, all of a sudden, Chris, have the lead. And they let it two to nothing, hadn't let it since. Now with 8.38 to go, they lead once more. They trailed by as many as 14 points. And I like Caleb Furrow for Christopher Newport as well. Keep him in the game because he can, he can make threes. Parker can't get it over the front rim. Ian Anderson uses the elbows to create space on the rebound. 
Crossover, Hines with the left hand. Too strong. Offensive board. You mentioned Caleb Furr making an impact. Thought three. Oh, he thought about that. He needed a little bit more space. And boy, this game has gotten physical. Every screen, every possession. There's the screen. There's the navigation. There's the pull up. John Hines out of Norfolk, Virginia gives Christopher Newport their largest lead. And there's the All-American, John Hines. 6'4", 190, drive, set those feet. All-American, big time shot. And the captains are back in it. So both teams have really stuck to their game plans and that's why we have a tight, close game here. And if you're Mount Union, Christian Parker, the All-Americans, got to touch the basketball in the half court. Trying to battle on that far side block. And there is a foul on that wrestling match. Down low, it's a foul on Caleb Furr. I'll tell you what, the uh, officials have got their hands full this last eight minutes because both teams so much at stake here and every possession is being contested. It's interesting for Mount Union. It's almost the opposite script that they had in the semifinals when they were down by 20 yep. and cut it to 13 at half and overcame that deficit. That's a foul before it was inbounded once more. I think they'll get fur again. And that hurts Christopher Newport because fur in the game gives him that extra dynamic ability to score and make some threes. The game really changed when Christopher Newport found and made some perimeter jump shots. All of a sudden, the game changed. A leaning perimeter jump shot. Gurley has it go in and out. On the run are the captains. Colin Hines off the backboard, bounces off the front of the rim. Yeah, that's a play. If you're going to take it in there, the young freshman, you got to finish. He takes some of the top assignments on the other squad. Got his hands in there and commits the foul on Mansfield. That is the fourth foul on Colin Hines. <laughs> saying, hey, Mansfield pushed off that off arm. But they get the freshman. 73% free throw shooter. Remember, the Purple Raiders missed their first five free throws in this game. They've now hit their last two. First year player here at Mount Union after four at Wilmington College in Ohio, where it was two time All Ohio Athletic Conference. Mount Union back within one. Anderson against Mansfield. Go to the high ball screen for John Hines. Fade away, Jay. Tipped up and wow. out by Barber. Barber, great soft hands. The big junior with a tip in to that miss. Terrific offensive rebound. Step back, lean for three. Woo! Mansfield showing out. He has 11. Big three throws and then a big three. Can it be matched by Furr? His second from the corner, Caleb Furr. How do you leave him open in transition? If you're Mount Union, they're celebrating on the other end, and Furr, the best shooter on the court, wide open in the corner. Christopher Newport. Parker off the back of the rim, gets it back himself. Float game strong and one. <laughs> A chance to tie it at the line. Wow, in transition. You see for a catch shoot, wide open. That's a tough shot in the corner. And then the big guy who started the game so dominant, the reach in there. If you're going to foul in that situation, make sure the ball doesn't get to the basket. Can't let him get a three-point opportunity. I can't stress enough, free throw shooting. He now is one for six from the line. That could be the difference in this game. It's certainly going to be really something to watch in this last six minutes. Both of these teams going all out for the D3 championship. Is it more Furr? Christopher Newport. Caleb Furr again. He's four for 
for Thor from deep. Yes! And how does he get wide open again? Terrific shot. The answer from Mansfield won't fall. And Fur digs it out. Yeah, Caleb Fur. He's been the difference in this game. His ability to make shots. The young sophomore. Ah, it's and one. It's all captains. He's relentless. Well, Caleb Fur from Warrington. Virginia. Tell you what, on the big stage and then the big All American, John Hines. Knack for making big baskets. Caps off the three point play. And all of a sudden, the captains with a seven point lead. Their largest. They've been trailing most of the way. They'll get Barber on the reach. But they're just a different team. When Brody and Fur make some shots, it just opens everything up. All of a sudden, then Hines can get to the basket. All of a sudden, the pressure then is on Mount Union, who has not defended the perimeter very well. The last one and one for Mount Union. Front end. No. Well, if Mountain Union doesn't win this game, they're going to look back at the free throw shooting and going to have to point to that as something that they just did not do well here in the national championship. Three for ten from the line. Hard to win. Burley against John Hines. Two top perimeter options going head to head. Just pops out to the right. Mountain Union still down seven. And now this pace favors... Christopher Newport, because they'll take some time in the half court. They've got an All-American with the basketball who can create offense, and now they've got two guys on the perimeter that can make threes. Isolation time. Step back from the top of the circle. Off the back of the rim. Yeah, I think Coach Newport would like get something going to the rim instead of a fadeaway jump shot. The hands Barber slaps it away. Still on the deck. And a foul. Ian Anderson rolls his eyes because he's assisted up. Double bonus upcoming. Yeah, both teams got to try to find a way here to stop complaining about calls. Prison Terrific hands there, too. Barber, great hands, soft hands, physical play, and just find a way now here this last four minutes and change to keep your composure and take every possession one by one here. Try to get yourself to a national championship. And you really feel like it starts here for Mount Union at the free throw yep. line. And finally sure one goes in for Braden Poole. Four for 11 from the free throw line. Missed seven free throws, down six points. Yep, been the difference in the game. Coast to coast, Athletic Conference champions, Christopher Newport, the lead with just over four to play. Barber ripped through against Parker, the bigs going at it, Lucky Horns, and Trey Barber comes out on top. Wow, shot fake, come back to the middle and finished soft hands. Gurley accelerates into the lane, loses the ball. It's out on the captains. Stays with Mount Union under four left. Christopher Newport leads. Under four. Trying to get to that national championship circle. Trey Barber. Only averages three and a half points per game. He's made four threes. Every champion, it always feels like you get that unexpected contribution from somewhere. Parker way off on the three, the All-American. And the captain chased the rebound, half possession, leading by seven. And let's give Christopher Newport's defense a lot of credit. You know, Christian Parker was so good early, and they've really found a way to shut him down since then. Barber saves that ball, nearly a turnover for CNU. John Hines, leading scorer, spins, gets fouled, and will head to the line with both teams in the double bonus.
Tom Union foul on 30 Braden Pools. Fourth foul on Braden Poole, the starting forward for Mount Union. Hines, free throws 12 and 13. He's now eight for 12. Wow. So many missed free throws on both teams. Coach K looking on there. This is the time of the game, if you're a coach, you know, you just want that clock to run. Like, keep running, keep running. Gonna have to make free throws and take care of the basketball now. Misses both. Remember, Christopher Newport in the semifinals really struggled down the stretch at the free throw line. Kept Swarthmore in it. Just one for six from the line down the stretch in the last minute. Christian Parker makes them pay. He is 21. And nearly get a steal in transition. They do. Parker goes the length of the floor to pick it up. Free throws and turnovers. Both things the captains have not done well here in the last minute. Parker sets the screen, and Brody didn't try to navigate around it. Gets called for the foul. Two free throws for Parker. Well, it's the old four-point, the old dreaded four-point swing. You miss two free throws, the other team comes down and gets a layup, and then really an ill-advised pass ahead. What's the most important thing now? The ball, possession, take care of the ball. Is that the excitement of being this close to a championship? And a little bit of an experience. This is a huge stage and a huge two and a half minutes plus here for both teams. So this is where you need your best players to step up. And speaking of best players, there's one of them right there. Some big free throws. You can see his free throw numbers today. Not great. Two big ones. <laughs> Coming alive here. Ian Anderson checks out Ty Henderson back in. The Mount Union crowd and the Christopher Newport crowd heavily engaged. Yes. Why not? 2.42 left. It's a one possession game. The Purple Raiders. And you don't need to foul here. Plenty of time left in this game. The captain's going to keep the ball, I would think, in John Hines' hand as much as they can. Denying Hines. Yeah, didn't even touch the basketball. Well, it has to be Barber. Extended away from the block. Gets there himself. Keeps the pivot. Turns and shoots. And wow. gets the roll. Does it himself. 23 well, points. Yeah, that's the, that's the shot Mount Union wanted. And what Trey Barber's done is just deliver throughout the entire game. A slap down and a foul. Caleb Furr's fourth. More free throws for Mount Union. They weren't able to get the basketball to John Hines, and they wanted to, and terrific defense. Fadeaway contested jump shot. That's what you wanted if you're Mountain Union, and Barber's just delivered all afternoon. Both bigs with double doubles, including Parker, who's at the line. Gets all the rim, but does fall. Again, still plenty of time left in this game. A made free throw here. Cuts it to a one possession game. So if you're Mountain Union, you just got to do what you did. Play through the whole possession. Try to get a stop. Three point game. Mountain Union one timeout left. Christopher Newport with a couple. Arrow right now. It favors Mountain Union. Both teams in the double bonus. Great reach. Nearly a steal. But a foul instead. Colin Gurley thought he had it. Instead, it's his fourth. Got to go meet the basketball. Wow. That's an aggressive play. Maybe the, the call was early there. From that angle, it did look like a foul early on in that exchange. With these gambles from Mount Union, we've seen it a few times. That time it doesn't pay off, and Matt Brody gets the spin off the back of the rim. It just deadened and then fell in. See Coach, two line there, working every angle. A lot of subs in and out here. Game management now, under two minutes. This is the second gets his own board off the missed free throw. 
And Brody for a three off the front rim. And ball bounces out of bounds and stays with the captains. So Brody took a quick shot with a minute 45 left in the lead. He was trying to put the game out of commission, so to speak. But every little bounce now has gone Christopher Newport's way. Mountain Union frustrated with some calls here. A lot of standing around and a missed free throw, rebound, no free throw, box out. Little things like that, hard to win when you're down. Now under two minutes left, the officials can go to the video monitor to take a look and see who was the last to touch before the ball went out of bounds. Then it was ruled a Christopher Newport possession. That's the last yeah, touch. Yeah, I don't That's think there's I don't think there's any question. I think it's absolutely Christopher Newport's basketball. There's the three. You know, it could have been an over the back there. You know, that's probably what coach is complaining a little bit about. Nice box out on the weak side there. It's going to be Christopher Newport's basketball with 20 on the shot clock. Yeah, that's pretty clear. So how, for Christopher Newport, do you prioritize, hey, have an early look that's clean versus we have a lead with under two minutes left? Well, great question. I think for Brody, a guy who's made big shots, that was, that was the shot to put the game away. So he took it saying, hey, this is the national championship. I'm going to try to put this thing away. Didn't make it, but the hustle plays and extra efforts have gotten it back. So I think this has got to be John Hines if they can get him the basketball. Tipped and the limb down from the opposite side. Yeah, and he's got the ball out of bounds, so he'll try to get it in and probably come back and get it. Barber's been their most effective guy around the basket. Anderson finds Barber. Now he's got it. He's not giving it up, I don't think, unless he can get it into Barber. Penetrates inside, nice into the paint, off the front of the rim, and Mountain Union gets the rebound. Mansfield bullies, offensive fouls the call. Brody, right place, right time, and Mansfield is stunned. And the fans in purple are stunned, moving, moving. You know what? I don't know. I think both guys were moving there. It's that push off sometimes that the officials see with the arm. Yeah, that's a, that's wow. a tough one. You know, it's bang, bang. I think the defense was moving. I think what the officials saw was that push off with the arm. You know, that's an emotional foul out right there, boy. I'll tell you. There's so much at stake here. So hard to get here. And... So hard to get back as we profiled in the game. Can they get it in? No, they did not. Five. No, they say timeout. John Krikorian got it in. Of course, that was the story throughout college basketball yesterday, getting the timeouts in and having the referees see it. Well, John Krikorian from the Christopher Newport bench got the timeout in before the five seconds, a save possession for Christopher Newport. This isn't live speed. You can see the officials with their hand signals counting. Wow. But you can't see off screen when the timeout was called. Now you can see where the timeout was called. And it's just the officials communicating. One with the count, the other one, here's the timeout. Great signal. job by our together. camera crew. Yep. Great job by our camera crew capturing that. And certainly Mount Union frustrated with the calls, but long way to go. One timeout each for. Both teams, tough emotions right there for Mr. Mansfield. So with a second chance to get the ball in, they do it much more cleanly. Henderson zips across the timeline. See, I almost think if you're Mountain Union with the way that they've shot free throws, I would have fouled right away. Now you don't want to foul. See, that's a mistake. You either got to foul right away and extend the game or play through the whole possession. 
Chris Painter is his second foul. And you mentioned it's just like when you decide to commit the foul is crucial when you have yeah. Yeah. Within the minute you know, 30 left. Yeah, you have to foul right away or play through the whole possession. Brody, no. 61% free throw shooter for a team at the line shooting just 54% in the game. Call the rim again. It's one of two. Five point game, a minute seven left. Matthew, Christopher Newport, you do not want to foul a jump shooter. Mountain Union, you gotta get something quick. Gurley wants it back. Has the big on him. Mismatch on the other side is Parker. Now I would foul right away. The problem with Christopher with a Mountain Union, a lot of players with four fouls. So who to commit the foul? Hines skates through, lobs, it's not the way! Christian Parker makes a play! Down three, Mount Union with the ball. Surprise, no timeout here, try to draw something up. Gurley attacks the big and gets fouled. Barber commits the personal and a 77% free throw shooter has a chance to put the team within one. Well, careless play here. What's the most important thing, the basketball and possession? A one-handed jump pass with a national championship on the line. Can't do that, and Mount Union, the Purple Raiders, back to the free throw line here. Team's best free throw shooter. Two-point game. A made free throw here. A quick trap, see if you can't get a steal. Then I would look to foul. Because of the struggles of, of the free throw line for, for Christopher Newport, I would look to foul right away. Got them both. Down to a one-point game. Yeah, look for a quick trap here if you are the Purple Raiders. If you don't get it, then you got to reach in and foul. The Speedy Henderson in the backcourt. They're trying to trap instead of foul. A step through, no travel call. Hines lost. It's intercepted again. Gurley steals it. 20 seconds left. Gurley scoops off the rim. Parker tips it in. Mel Union leads. 15 seconds left. Henderson tap wow. one. Christopher Newport back in front. <laughs> I mean, we can't even catch our breath. What a finish here. Going underneath the tip in. And then, I'll tell you what, what a play by Ty Henderson. Not giving up and just going right to the basket. Oh, timeout. Mount Union calls timeout with 13.4 left. Henderson, the speed is the strength of his game. He showed it out here in Fort Wayne to hit the go-ahead basket. And a 75% free throw shooter has a chance to put his team up to. Incredible, just an incredible run here. And what's come into play? Taking care of the basketball and free throws, but both teams quick, hard runs to the basket. A lot of credit by the young guard here to get to the basket and not take any time. Just go right to the rim, try to get fouled, trying to create some contact there. He might have gotten away with the travel, the possession before, right in front of our table here. And they didn't give up both teams. Just what a competitive effort and great game down the stretch. So Mount Union uses their timeout before the free throw with 13.4 left. So that was where the confusion, was it actually a time, who called the timeout? So there's one, so the timeout now with the free throw, so they're talking strategy. So a made free throw here, it's a two point game. So if you're Christopher Newport, you're saying, hey, don't want to give up a three, anything going to the basket, worst case scenario, we'll go into overtime or make them earn it on the foul line. Christopher Newport still with one timeout left. And the arrow right now belongs to Mount Union. So again, a made free throw here. One possession game, plenty of time for Mount Union. They don't have to take a three, try to get something going to the basket and an offensive rebound. 
And if you're the captains, you do not want to foul and do not want to foul a jump shooter. A missed free throw here. Got to sprint back in transition. Two-point lead. And mentioned Christopher Newport had a timeout. They're just going to sub here and bring in the defender, Colin Hines. In for Henderson. 13.4 left. Mount Union the ball down two. Got to go here. Eight seconds across the timeline. Gurley crosses over into the paint. Leads for Parker. Lays it in with 4.3 left. We're tied at 72. No hesitation at all there. None. Captains do have a timeout. Will they use it? Barber with one second. Step through the oh, oh, oh. It goes. Oh. The captains win the D3 title. Those officials will look to confirm it, but Trey Barber declined to use the timeout, attack Parker, and that is out of his hands. It's out of his hands, good. And in the most dramatic way possible, wow. Christopher Newport discovers new ground and wins the first ever Division III championship. Wow. Hard to find the words. I'll tell you what. Incredible game. Heartbreak for Mount Union. And what effort by Christopher Newport. An incredibly stunning finish in Fort Wayne. Christopher Newport down as many as 14 points in the first half. And when you have celebration, you have disappointment on the other side. And the Purple Raiders gave it all they could at the end to tie it up. But then Barber untied it right before the horn. Trey Barber, Jr. Out of Woodbridge, Virginia. All D3 region first team goes coast to coast and wouldn't be denied.